A test has been conducted by the U.S. Navy to learn how to resupply warships with missiles during a high-intensity conflict. The Military Sealift Command-Sponsored Reloading Test paired USS Spruance DDG-111 with the offshore support vessel MV Ocean as a test platform to support logistics experimentation for fuel, stores, passengers, and ordnance delivery. Officials stated the test marked the first time the U.S. Navy has used an offshore support vessel to test the reloading of the Mark 41 VLS vertical launch system aboard a warship. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why reloading of USS Spruance Mark 41 VLS at sea is a vital step for the U.S. Navy. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder's been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The ship-to-ship -ship transfer of missiles, especially in the open ocean, is a complex operation. Missiles in the Navy's fleet of cruisers and destroyers have to be put inside individual cells of the Mark 41 vertical launch system, and this cannot be done while the ship is underway. The missiles must be loaded by cranes, which viewers can understand is difficult to do at sea. The experiment, which ran from October 4th to October 7th, involved training loads, a third fleet spokesman told USNI News. Commander Sean Robertson said crews maneuvered training canisters, some empty, some weighted, but none had live ordnance during the tests. MV Ocean Valors maneuvered alongside Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer USS Spruance in order to conduct a proof-of-concept evolution in San Diego on October 5, 2022. In recent years, the U.S. Navy has been pursuing the capability to reload a warship's VLS while at sea and closer to the maritime fight. VLS reloading experimentation has involved a number of Pacific Fleet ships. Commander Robertson stated that in 2021, the dry cargo ship USNS Amelia Earhart T -E and guided missile destroyer USS John S. McCain DDG-56 experimented with VLS reloading at sea. That was preceded in 2019 by two separate VLS reloading tests which were pierside and protected harbor only. There were no open ocean events. Three years earlier, in 2016, the Navy put VLS reloading to the test with initial experimentation with the auxiliary ship USNS Bob Hope T AKR 300 and the guided missile cruiser USS Bunker Hill CG-52. Currently, a warship needs to return to port or reach a safe, calm harbor where it can reload its VLS from a support ship and be a safe distance from threats from adversaries like China or Russia. For example, in the Pacific Theater, the U.S. Navy warship may have to sail to Guam or even Yokosuka or Hawaii or maybe Australia. This means that ships will be out of the fight for days or weeks with time lost to transit, but also with the added potential enemy threats from air or space. The loss of a warship that needs to travel far to a safe harbor to get its resupply of missiles is a critical problem. Auxiliary ships like the fleet of TAKEs and LMSR vessels could be positioned tactically and these could be used to resupply warships like Arleigh Burke class destroyers, Ticonderoga class cruisers, and Zumwalt class destroyers. The US Navy has 17 Ticonderoga class cruisers, 70 Arleigh Burke class destroyers, and three Zumwalts, all of which are multi-role warships. 
Ticonderoga class has 122, and Arleigh Burke class has 92 Mark 41, whereas Zumwalt has 80 cells Mark 57 VLS. These cells can be used to deploy a variety of different kinds of weapons like ESSAM or Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile for air defense, Tomahawks for land attack, RUM 139A VL ASROC for anti-submarine roll, as well as dual roll missiles like SM-6 that can be used for ballistic missile defense as well as for anti-ship roll. Importantly, the cells can also be used to accommodate the Block 5A Tomahawk which is called Maritime Strike and has a seeker capable of hitting a moving target and armed with a warhead geared towards destroying enemy warships. Rivals like China and Russia have been working on ways to take on the U.S. Navy. For example, when operating close to China, the U.S. Navy will not have an easy time. Apart from having to contend with rapidly growing People's Liberation Army-Navy fleet, it will have to counter ground-based, long-range anti-ship missiles. China has two missiles that are specifically designed to neutralize supercarriers or large warships, DF-21D and DF-26B. The Dongfeng-21 is a two-stage, solid-fueled, single-warhead, medium-range ballistic missile MRBM, that has a speed of around Mach 10, a maximum range of around 1,450 kilometers or 900 miles, and carries a 600 kilogram or 1,350 pound warhead. DF-26B, developed from DF-26, is the anti-ship variant and can hit naval targets. It has a range of 4,000 kilometers or 2,500 miles and is thought to be designed to conduct precision nuclear or conventional strikes with an accuracy of 100 meters CEP. The missile has a two-stage solid-fueled propulsion system and can accommodate a 1,200 kilogram or about 2,650 pounds warhead. Russia also has several types of long-range anti-ship missiles. It's evident that the U.S. Navy needs to have all its warships loaded with optimum firepower to thwart any aggression like a Chinese attempt to invade Taiwan. The ability to reload warships in the sea could be a game-changer. It will be interesting to see if the U.S. Navy ultimately decides to implement this. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.